Hey, I'm pro saxophonist. Jamie Anderson, you're watching Get Your Sax Together. Now, some of you don't read music at all. You just play completely by ear and that is totally fine. But there is a large number of you who do read music and even some of you who absolutely must read music to do a good gig. So today on this week's lesson, on this free saxophone lesson, you're going to learn my quick cheat sheet guide to sight reading, all the things you need to think about and how you can improve your sight reading. Let's crack straight on with it with point number one. Thinking about sight reading will not help you sight read, <laughs> okay? Despite this video, which is going to give you some great tactics, you must do it every day if you want any hope of getting better at sight reading. So remember that as we progress through the rest of the points, you've got to do it day in, day out. And that is more important than anything else I'm about to teach you. Okay, let's move on to point number two. When you first get the sheet music that you have to read, the first thing to do is to check the tempo. Get an idea of how fast the pulse is and how fast each subdivision is going by. Uh, it could be a funk song and you can see loads of semiquavers, 16th notes, but maybe the tempo is really slow, so it's not as bad as you think. Or it could just be eighth notes, quavers, but the tempo is 300 BPM <laughs> and it's all gonna go past really, really fast. So establish the tempo and get a sort of feel for the pulse that you're working in and, and a feel for the different subdivisions that you can see on the page. So that is the first thing to do when you get the sheet music. Once you've established the tempo and the subdivisions and how fast the notes are gonna go past, have a look and establish the key. Is there a key signature? Skim through the rest of the chart and establish if the key changes. You can also have a look for, if there's no key signature, have a look if there's repeated accidentals. Maybe it is in a key, but the accidentals are written out. So if you can, try and establish what key you're in, it's really gonna help you. Next, as I just mentioned before, don't look at the first bar, at the first measure, the first bar. Skim through the whole chart. I mean, it's unlikely that somebody's going to put a piece of paper in front of you and go, three, two, one, go. You're going to have, you know, a few seconds or a few minutes even before you play the thing. Maybe it's in a big band. You pull the, you pull the chart out and people are kind of getting ready. Quickly look through the entire chart and look for real problem areas. Get a measure of the whole piece before you have to sight read it. That's going to be a really useful tip to give you that zoomed out view and to troubleshoot any real problem areas that you're going to encounter. Okay, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty of actually sight reading this stuff. And above all else, the most important number one point is do not stop. Never stop. <laughs> You've got to keep going. When you're sight reading some music, what has happened is gone. You can't backtrack, you can't rewind the tape. And if you mess it up, just keep going. That is the, the one thing that most people get completely wrong. They make a mistake and instinctively they stop. No, you've got to keep soldiering on. <laughs> okay, now related to the last point, the first thing you should try and do is play the right rhythms. Now, I know it's normally the rhythms rather than the notes as a rule that trip, trip people up when you're sight reading. So the first thing to do is to make sure you're playing the right rhythms. Now, <laughs> it doesn't even matter at this point if you're playing the wrong notes. The right rhythms are more important than the right notes. If you're in a big band, for example, and you're playing a chart, and you're playing a few wrong notes, but you're playing all the right rhythms, that is gonna be far preferable to playing the right notes out of time or by playing in the gaps between other people. You're really gonna stick out. So get the rhythms dialed in above all else. After the rhythm, the next most important thing to, to get dialed in is the contour, the shape of the line. Now that's, I just mean if the line goes higher, you get higher. And I haven't said to play the right notes yet, <laughs> which is way down the list. So I bet that's something you haven't even really thought about. So you've got your rhythms. Now try and follow the shape of the line, even if you're playing all the wrong notes. Because uh, again, if you're in a big band or a horn section or you're playing with other people, if you're kind of moving in the same direction, you can get away with quite a lot, believe me. But if the whole band is going down and you're playing a high note, you know, it just, it doesn't work at all. So follow the general shape of the music and stay within the notated rhythms. 
Next thing to pay attention to is the phrasing. And you're right. This is still ranked above playing the right notes. <laughs> if the band is playing a short note and you play a long note, even if it's in the right rhythm, you're going to stick out. So phrasing is still more important than notes at this point. You've got your rhythm, you've got the contour. Do the longs and shorts correctly. Get that articulation dialed in as the next priority before the notes. Okay, clouds part, choir of angels sing, la! The next thing is to try and get the notes right. Now, obviously, you've noticed that this is way down the list because it's not the most important thing about sight reading. Finding the right rhythms and articulation and the contour of the line and all these things is far more important than playing the exact right notes. But now you try and dial in the right notes. However, very, very important. So, are you listening? Don't sacrifice getting the right notes for all the things above this on the list. It's an added bonus if you can get the right notes. <laughs> And this is especially true when you're playing in an ensemble. So if you can see the notes and you can get the notes, brilliant, you're doing great. But don't sacrifice the rhythm, the phrasing or the shape of the line to get them. OK, so that's some of the most important points. And I've got some great tips coming right up in a few seconds. But just before we get there, if you haven't done so already, make sure you check out my free Saxophone Success Masterclass. It's my gift to you. It's an awesome free lesson where you can instantly improve your sax playing, your improvising, your tips and tricks, your sound, the whole lot is absolutely awesome. So go and check out the free Saxophone Success Masterclass and let's get to those cool tips now. Right, so a couple of general points. Number one, make sure that you look ahead in the music. You can't, if you want to be a good sight reader, you can't be looking at the notes that you're playing. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive. <laughs> you've got to be looking ahead of the notes you're playing, especially if you've got some easy notes. Let's say you've got some whole notes, some uh, semi-breves in a row. Say you've got three long, three long notes. While you're quickly, you quickly memorize them, and as you're playing them, you look ahead and you look down or across, you see what's coming up. That gives you some breathing space to assess what's next. Maybe look at the rhythms or uh, is there a key change coming up? Or even a time signature change. So use those moments where you've got very easy reading to keep playing, but scan ahead in the music. You're really going to have so much more skill as a sight reader if you can gradually work on reading further and further ahead. You can even get somebody to cover up the music that you're playing at the moment so that you're forced to scan ahead. That's a great exercise. The next one's a bit of an abstract tip. I call it the, uh, the fly mode, going to fly mode. You know when you go to swat a fly and the fly seems to just always, you know, disappear underneath your newspaper or whatever? Well, in the fly's mind... The fly will see that newspaper coming extremely slowly because somehow <laughs> we have to assume flies experience time a bit different. I mean, who can know the mind of a fly? But in the context of sight reading music, if I've got a really difficult passage of 16th notes, I try and switch into the mind of a fly and I try and slow down time. Some of you might have experienced this. I hope you haven't. But if you've ever experienced a moment of trauma or a car crash or something like that, Many people describe it as time just telescoping and the time is slowing down and time almost stands still. If you can somehow harness this quality when you've got a fast passage of music, it'll take out all that anxiety that you've got. And a lot of people just rush things that they don't need to rush. You know, you've got the period, you've got uh, loads of notes in a row and you go, Whoa! and it's all a mess. So get into fly mode, telescope time slowly and imagine yourself just playing them in slow motion. It's really going to help you out, even though it sounds a bit weird. Consider what genre you typically play in, okay? If you uh, if you played a big band or a soul band or something like that, typically you are not going to need to practice contemporary classical music with different time, uh, different time signature changes and uh, massive uh, octave leaps and things like that. You're just not going to encounter that music most of the time. So kind of work in the genre that you're used to. So if you play in big bands, maybe you could start sight reading books of jazz etudes or transcription books. Because they're the sort of jazz rhythms that you're typically going to operate in. Or if you play in a funk band, you could work on reading 16th notes because that's typically what you have to do in funk. If you play in a reggae and a ska band, it's unlikely that you're going to have to play a bunch of very rapid 16th notes or triplets or weird, um, you know, rhythms, cross rhythms, things like that. So 
be sensible. You don't have to sight read some very esoteric stuff to get better at reading what you typically play. The next thing which is really going to help your sight reading is just knowing all your major scales fluently. There is a video linked up there now, which is my playlist for learning all your major scales, minor scales, pentatonic scales. If you can fluently play all your scales in every key across the whole range of the instrument, when you're sight reading, most of the time, a lot of music that you'll have to read is just little tiny segments of scales. And when you're in a key, you don't have to keep looking at the key signature because you've got the imprint of all the notes already under your fingers. So learning your scales is going to be, and especially your arpeggios, is going to be a really big help for your sight reading. And a final tip to really help your sight reading is actually doing the opposite of sight reading, which is transcribing. That is slowly working out the notes of a solo. Because when you have to do this, you have to work out what the rhythms are and you have to write them down yourself. Now, as soon as you start working out and writing down rhythms yourself, you get a much better understanding of how rhythms work. And typically, it's the rhythms that are people's weak suit when it comes to sight reading because that's what trips them up. Whenever I see people sight reading, a lot of the time, they'll get, you know, the notes, but the rhythm will be a complete and utter disaster. It'll just be, uh, it'll just be a series of notes played virtually anywhere. So once you get used to transcribing and getting good at it and writing out solos that you've transcribed, you'll start to learn how rhythms work and it'll make it much easier for you to sight read them. So in terms of resources that you can use to sight read, you can go on Amazon or to your music store and you can get uh, books of music to sight read uh, for the grade exams. You can get books of etudes. You can get classical studies. You might be able to get transcriptions of Bach, which is really good for a sight reading saxophone. If you can get transcriptions of Bach that you know are specifically for saxophone, so you don't have to read in you know bass clef or whatever. Um, Bach has got lots of scales and arpeggios that are really going to be good for you when it comes to practicing sight reading. Or you can pull out, you know, just new pieces you haven't used. Anything that you've never seen before is good sight reading, okay? So make sure you do it every day, even if it's a little bit every day, because it's going to sharpen, it's going to sharpen that skill. It's going to hone that knife of your sight reading if you do it every day. Ugly Dugglies, that's all we've got time for this week. As always, I invite you into my inner circle. If you want to interact with me every day and uh, share my world and pick up so many good tips about practice, about solos, about phrasing, about improvising, which are really going to catapult your playing forward. And you can share your triumphs and you can share your frustrations with the friendliest community online. Go and check out the inner circle. The link is there. It's a really, really cool place to be. And it's really, really going to transform your playing. If you feel like you've got good value from today, you can buy me a coffee using the link that you can see there. And if you bought me a coffee, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. And until next week, make sure that you practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. Take it easy, guys. But there's a huge community...